You have to feel in more ways than one for those workers who staged a sit-in at that factory in Chicago. Just as their heroic cry for justice was capturing the attention of the country, the press got swept up in a saga of corruption worthy of a banana republic. The Fed's 76-page indictment of Illinois Governor Blagojevich would make Al Capone blush. The late bard of Chicago, Studs Terkel, used to say, if Chicago isn't the most corrupt city in America, it's certainly the most theatrically corrupt. No wonder Obama wants to get out of town. But while corruption is a tale oft told, even in the land of Lincoln, what those workers did is an act of uncommon courage. It was only a week ago that the company they worked for, Republic Windows and Doors, told them their plant was being shut down for good. The employees were stunned. By law, they were entitled to 60 days' notice and some parting benefits. Instead, they got just three days' notice and their health insurance was terminated. The owners said the company's cash flow was suffering because of declining sales in home construction and that Bank of America had canceled their line of credit, making it impossible to pay the bills. But at the same time, Bank of America was drawing down $25 billion in bailout money from taxpayers, including taxes paid by the workers being laid off. This, you will remember, is money intended to open the spigots of credit so that banks could do the very kind of lending so desperately needed by companies like the one in Chicago. That's not all. It turns out the company's owners are shutting down this union factory at the exact moment they're starting an operation in Iowa, where they can use non-union labor at lower wages. So more than 200 workers in Chicago launched what they called a peaceful occupation of the plant. We shall not be moved, they sang. President-elect Obama, once a community organizer in Chicago, joined the chorus. He endorsed the rebels, saying they represent millions of workers who are losing their jobs, their health insurance, even their homes. Yes, we did! Yes, we did! Wednesday night, the sit-in ended. Public pressure forced Bank of America to relent and come up with a cash loan to pay the fired workers what they're owed. Which brings us to what was happening this week in Washington where Congress was asking the Bush administration, what did happen to that $700 billion we gave you to bail out the economy? That's what those workers in Chicago wanted to know as well. So, to connect the dots, I'm joined by Emma Coleman Jordan. She's the editor of a book due to appear early next year, the title of which says it all, The Short End of the Stick. Professor Jordan teaches commercial law and economic justice at Georgetown University. She's a former White House fellow and assistant to the Attorney General. She's been tracking the hearings in Congress, trying to nail down what indeed has happened to the $700 billion. Welcome back to the Journal. It's good to be here. Why did it take a workers' revolt and public outrage to get a huge financial institution like Bank of America to do the right thing? Well, I think these large institutions think they're beyond accountability. It appears there were no management structures in place in the Treasury Department to keep track of exactly what these banks were doing with the money. The money was given. The top banks were given $25 billion each, including Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, banks that protested they didn't need the money. They were asked to uh, take this money anyway. It was expected that they would convert these capital infusions into lending. But they didn't. They, they got they the didn't. money, but they didn't lend it. Bank of America was not lending the money. They weren't that lending the money. They were uh, busily uh, making tactical acquisitions. What do you mean? Uh, buying other companies. Merrill Lynch, a very uh, formidable former investment bank, just on the eve of its failure, was acquired by Bank of America. I, I read that of the first big wad of cash, something like $160 million or so, that the government handed out for lending, the banks paid more than half of it to shareholders, which means those workers losing their jobs in Chicago uh, while investors are getting taxpayer funds for dividends, right? Is that your understanding of what's been happening? It's an economic cruelty. Uh, is one of the ways of thinking about it, where taxpayers are people who are at the bottom end of the income spectrum, who are asked to pay taxes 
into a fund that is used to rescue failed financial uh, management strategies and practices. So help me understand why it is that, that, that institutions that take so much of your, my, and everyone else's money are spending it on dividends. Well, because there's no accountability, and we have a leadership at the Treasury Department that has decided we'll just trust them. Trust who? The financial institutions that produce this global crisis. That's not trust. That's gamble. Right? Uh, well, you make a point that I think is uh, a good point. But more importantly, I think, was the belief system that Secretary Paulson brought to the decision-making. And what was that belief system? Yeah. The belief system was one in which he believed that by fixing the problem at the top, by giving the money with trust to his peer institutions on Wall Street, the money would trickle down in the form of lending to consumers and businesses, and the economy would be restored. And so that way of thinking dominated his decision-making, slowed things down. The facts that were clearly on display were simply ignored. And I'm giving Secretary Paulson credit for being a very smart man. I believe that the delays were caused by pre-commitments to an economic belief system that has been turned on its head by this crisis. The ideology that that trickle-down economics will work and that the market will eventually correct the excesses? Is that what you think that yes. ideology is? That's yes. The, that's the bubble they live in in, Wash, in, in, in on Wall Street, right? It's that confluence of belief, the Federal Reserve, the Department of the Treasury, and the White House all believing that the markets would correct so that in the year between August of 2007 and September of 2008, we had a natural experiment. And the natural experiment was the markets did not correct. They crashed and burned, and as a result, the government had to come in to rescue with the taxpayers' dollars. Just this week, the House Financial Services Committee uh, berated the Assistant Secretary of Treasury, Neil Kashkari, who's supposed to be running the bailout, for not tracking the money. Look at this. You going to tell us ever who got the money that we paid under, derivative, uh, under AIG's derivative contracts? And why, if not, why not? This is a tough question because it's hard to know with a dollar in the company, did this dollar that the taxpayers go in go to this use? Did it go to paying expenses? And so I, I'm, that, that's I'm really not a credible response. Well, what are we doing? What are we doing to address that, that piece of it? The, the lack of transparency. Uh, we got to get this thing going again. And as long as people don't trust each other, folks are going to be afraid to lend. Mr. Kashkari, yes, an executive at AIG, just got a bonus of $3 million. The three executives from the big three said they'd work for a dollar a year. I'm asking you, if that's the case, is TARP going to ask for the money back? There have been some press reports about AIG that are referred to uh, bonus schemes. When I've looked into it and had our people look into it, there have been some cases where they had deferred compensation that was already earned by people, not the CEOs. Well, deferred remember, compensation of $3 million? Remember, Congressman, we got rid of the management team of AIG. Well, who are these new clowns team. getting that money? Again, Congressman, well, why can't you just give it. a simple answer so the people I represent can have confidence in you? I don't think you understand at all the pain and the hurting that's going on in this country of the people who are on the verge of losing their jobs. And you can sit there and not come to a decision as to whether or not $3 million bonus is too much. If you even have to ask that question, whether it's too much, Mr. Kashkari, you're not the man for the job. Do you think this congressional reaction is representing the frustration at the grassroots of, of people who finally saying, as Howard Beale said in that famous movie, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore? Is it, you think that's happening? Is that what the Chicago sit-in represents, a, a Rosa Parks moment? I do. I do. It is an opportunity that these workers took to stand up directly. And it's interesting because they targeted not just their employer, Republic 
windows and door, but they targeted 